we start off this question with a coil around a copper core. Oh, interesting. Then you send alternating current through the coil. Alternating current, usually you use this symbol to show that the current can change direction. If the current suddenly flow here, like this, then the coil will generate a magnetic field that is pointing in. Use your hand, your right hand, right hand grip rule, the thumb like that. Okay. And then all the small, small red color arrows should be where your fingers are pointing. So you should have some kind of magnetic field pointing like this. Maybe this time it's out. Lah. Coming like that. And this field that suddenly appear will cause the copper core to have some kind of induced EMF. So this field that I just draw in purple cause an induced EMF in the copper core. Does the copper core like that? Nope. All the things that are induced oppose the change. They don't like it. Then suddenly, next moment, the current change direction. Ah, change again. Ah. Oh no, the so current changed this way. And now, everything is going this way. So your direction of magnetic field also change. Now your magnetic field is pointing to the right. Here's your north and here's your south. Then the copper core is like, ha, ah, change again, ah. it opposes again. And it keeps alternating back and forth. So there's forever a change and forever opposition. And the copper core does not like that. So what are we trying to do here? The heating effect of the current itself in the coil is negligible. But explain why the copper core temperature rises. The long story short, copper core is very stressed. Too much change, get hot now. Kind of like us in life, if there's too many things changing, 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 then we get very stressed, then we get overheated. So, how do you explain this for four marks? <sighs> well, whenever there's an explain question for induction, uh, remember, there's a general template on how you can answer it. First thing you can talk about is change in flux. Second thing, Faraday's law. Is there an EMF induced? Because d phi dt. Then third thing, Lenz law, oppose a change. What is opposing the change? Current induced oppose a change or some magnetic field oppose a change. So oppose. And lastly, oftentimes you require to talk about energy. So mention energy. Is there energy loss? Usually heating. Ooh, did I say heating? The heating effect. So whenever you see long explain question, just think of these four main steps and explain everything. Okay, let's start. Change in flux. Is there a change in flux? For the core. Now the main player is the core. We're talking about the core. Is there a change in flux in the core? Yes, there is. One moment, there is a field through the core this way. Next moment, there's a field through the core the other way. So yes, there is a change in flux. So we just need to mention that. So we say that the magnetic flux of phi in the core. That you can say magnetic flux linkage of flux is still the same thing. So magnetic flux in the core is changing. That's the first thing. So if you've got a change in flux, what happened? Faraday's law. Bring in Faraday's law. And you say, and this induces an EMF. EMF where? Ah? The, cop the copper core is just a pipe like that. I mean a solid pipe. Lah. So solid, heavy thing. Mm, induce EMF where? Ah? Everywhere. And there's different, different EMF everywhere. One. So it needs an EMF in different parts of the core. Different parts of the cylinder or whatever. Parts in the core. So when there's unequal EMF here and there, then you will have current. But the current is not all flowing in one direction. The current is everywhere. Maybe some current flow here, some current flow there, some current flow here, some current flow. And these are what we call eddy currents. So you don't need to know where they, they look like, where how to draw. Lah, but just know that these things are called eddy currents. Because of unequal EMF. Current will flow from high EMF to low EMF. Oh, high potential to low potential. Okay, and let's see. What does the eddy current do? Ah? When you have current, lots and lots of current flowing through a conductor or a metal, it's going to get hot. So that's what the last part we're going to say that these eddy currents in the core cause heating. When your current flow into the metal, you cause heating, mark or resistance, all this thing. Causes heating 
of the core, the copper core. So one, two, I guess. Okay, four marks, where do these come from? Number one, you talk about the flux in the core changing. Flux in the core, I don't say flux in the air or flux in the core. You're talking about the core. So you have to refer to flux in the core is changing. M1. Go flux change means go what? EMF. Oh, so in induced EMF in the core. So induce EMF in parts of the core. And if you mention eddy currents because of this EMF, then that will be your next part. Either you mention it here, I guess, or down here also can. That will be M1. Why go what does the eddy current do? Cause heating. Oh, so we say heating. Eddy current causes heating. That's the last part down here. A1. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you don't know how to write, you just uh, you think of the four main points and then you just talk about ah, induced flux, got eddy current, got current, uh, then energy loss. Try to be specific, lah. say got in the core, flux here, heating in the core. But the general structure of answering this type of question, pretty fixed. Okay, here we have two hollow tube, left and right, hang vertically. And then you drop a magnet through it. Have you seen before this demo? Never mind, we'll look at it later. The magnet do not touch the side of the tubes. What does that mean? It means no friction. Lah. No contact, no friction. So this tells me there's no friction. Explain why magnet B takes much longer than magnet A to fall through the tube. Huh? Magnet B will take longer than A, meh? Means won't they drop the same speed? Hold it there. Let's go see some demos. For a C for ourselves. So this is a short snippet from MIT's demo on YouTube. I'll just show you a very quick YouTube in the YouTube. So the first thing, you have a copper tube right here. What if you drop an iron ball to it? Just drop, no? Toin. Come through already. 0 0.02 second, very fast. It's a, a, a copper tube. Huh? Now, what if you take a magnet, a spherical magnet, same size, and you drop through it? Hey? Eh? Why so long to come out? Oh my goodness. Four seconds only come out. Okay, look again. You ready? And drop. Eh? Magic. Why? What? What happened? Why the magnet takes so long to travel through the copper tube, but normal ball can drop very fast? You think about it. Here's one more to see. Now, this one is... have They have two tubes side by side, so you can see a comparison. One is aluminum. One is... Uh, glass tube so you can see the magnet. So the fella will take the bar magnet, drop it inside the top, and see which one land first. So the first one already land, eh? then the magnet only come down. So let's look at carefully at the timing. They are dropped at the same time. But the one that goes through the aluminum tube, tube takes so long. Le. Wow, what is happening? The answer is Lenz law, oppose the change, magnetic flux, induced current. But if you don't know what's happening, oh, you just follow the template of what to write. This is five marks, man. Five marks, what to write? If you don't know what to write and you panic during an exam and you're like, I have no idea what's happening, what is going on? Just remember this. Identify change in flux. Is there a change in flux when the magnet travels through the tube? Number two. Is there an induced EMF? Well, just mention it like there's a change in flux, just Faraday's law. Mention induced EMF. Number three, Lenz law. Is there something opposing the change? Oppose. A current induced to oppose a change. A magnetic field created to oppose a change. And lastly, of course, if you can, mention some energy changes. Which is usually what is happening in this kind of system. So, you have a tube. Hollow tube. And your magnet can go inside. North, south, go in. Is there a flux change? Yes, there is a flux change. Of course there is a flux change. You are cutting the flux. The flux lines can look something like this. Ooh, what is happening? Anyway, so north, south. And as the magnet go down, of course la, all these lines will get cut. Ma. All these lines cut a different section of the tube. So maybe, for example, if this one is north and south, come through. The tube does not like that. Oppose the change. Why is there a magnet coming here and trying to induce EMF? So an EMF will be induced in such a way, maybe for example, that a current will appear like this. And then this current that flows inside the aluminum tube will have a field, its own field actually, to oppose 
the incoming magnet. Something like this. See, they oppose, so this will be our north, this will be our south kind of thing. And now this is a very, very simplified picture of how the eddy current might look like. This is the current. And it's not just one loop of current, no, there's many, many all over the place, and it's not always in their orientation. So this is the B of some whatever current inside that. So how it actually looks like oh, is more complicated because you also have... Where is it? Ah! You have, as you, once you go inside there, you got all this loop cutting through the wall, right? And it's moving down, so it's cutting different parts of the wall. And so all this current, current can also look like this here. Leh. Flux here, got current here. Then the current also will generate mini magnetic field, which is green color, and it's really complicated. But hey, yeah, we don't need to know how to draw. We just say, oh, we got eddy current. So let's talk about the first thing. Yes, there is a change in flux. So we say, lo, as magnet falls, what happened? The tube is cutting the magnetic flux, or there's a change in flux. So we can say that, lo, as magnet falls, the tube cuts the magnetic flux. So this is having talking about the idea that there is a change in flux. Okay, the whole tube will, different a section of the tube will experience different change in flux. So. Okay, and why not, what happens when there's a change in flux? Faraday's law, bring that in. So talking about Faraday's law, E is proportional to change in flux or rate of change in flux. So you can say an EMF is induced. Induced where? Ah? In the metal tube. Oh, then you say, okay, EMF is induced in the aluminum. Aluminium. How do you ever spell these things? Always different every time I check. In the aluminium tube. And that is what you can say. So when there's EMF, there will be current. So EMF and current go together. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about. But this one is a whole continuous conducting sheet, a uh, tube cylinder. So instead of a current in a wire, you have eddy currents everywhere. Everywhere also got eddy current. Current here, current there, loop here, loop there. So we'll use the word eddy currents. So eddy current are generated or eddy currents are present in the metal tube. Present. And these eddy currents generate their own field. Generate a magnetic field why do they do that to oppose the change so this is talking about lens law so you're opposing the incoming magnet la. oppose the approaching magnet so if it's coming to you you try to oppose the change you say hey please don't come to me stay go away go away go away so eddie carlos is going to oppose that lastly uh, what else we need to talk about oh right step one two three four we talk about oppose a change, eddy currents. I guess current can come here. Induce EMF, induce current. Lens oppose a change. Oh, energy changes. Right. Oh, right. Energy change. We forgot to mention that. So how to how to uh, talk about energy change in this context? That we are, what are we trying to explain? Explain why it takes much longer. Energy. Kinetic energy. As your magnet falls... Its kinetic energy should be increasing. Okay, why I got draw so many arrows? Increase. But if you have all this opposition inside the tube, oh, opposition, then it will cause you to lose some kinetic energy as you fall down. Or, in other words, lose some energy. Lah. Don't say kinetic energy. Lose some energy. Got so many things opposing you, ma, so your kinetic energy cannot increase so much already. So you can talk about how uh, the magnet, as it falls in B, magnet in B, or magnet B, sorry, magnet B takes longer time. Oops, let's talk about energy first. So magnet B loses energy. Due to all this eddy current or post a change, all this thing. And it takes a longer time to fall. Takes a longer time to fall. Why? How do we calculate time again? Kinetic energy doesn't have time, right? Remember, acceleration 
an object will accelerate down. Will this magnet accelerate at 9.81 though? Actually no, a little lesser. Because of all these opposition, oppose the change, oppose the change, some kind of force pushing it up, okay, magnetic force and things like that. So we say, oh, longer time to fall because the acceleration is slower. Acceleration is slower or you can say less than 9.81. Okay, pretty much it. So if you just... Simply, simply write Faraday induced EMF flux change. Maybe you can get like two marks, three marks, but you want to be specific, so make sure you can get all of them. So this one, oh, my scheme is quite long for this section, but if you talk about the magnetic flux, there's a change in flux. The tube is cutting the magnetic flux because the magnet is moving. That's the first one. If you talk about EMF induced in the tube, uh, then that is under A1. So we talk about EMF induced, or you can also say eddy current induced, also can still under the same A1 mark, eddy current EMF. And what next? Oh, the next one. So what does the eddy current do? Ah? Oh, we forgot to say the eddy current causes heating. Causes heating in the tube. And that's why you have energy loss, loss energy, because eddy current causes heating. So, ah, yeah, this one is one more mark. And the last part. Magnet loses energy because of heating. So, that is on this side. Okay, loose energy is coming from A1. So, it is also A1. And you explain, actually mentioned, oh, it takes longer time because acceleration is less than. This is the last one, A1. There are two ways to explain this. You look at the mask scheme, there are two different sections, but I put both together so you can see the whole picture of how to explain what is happening. This is a very classic uh, induction question. They throw you a scenario, explain. Oh, so you have to think of your three, four steps. Always remember to mention these ones if you're not sure where to start. Okay, so that is all for this video example. If you want to rewatch some of the videos, go check out the YouTube videos of MIT demos. They're quite interesting to watch and you just like, Wow, amaze. Much wow, what is happening? So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next section, next example or theory video.